The Nobel Prize, now in its 120th year, remains the most revered of scientific awards. But while the prize and many of its recipients are household names, the people and processes behind the awards are less well known. Chemistry World recently met with Bengt Norden, former chair of the Nobel Selection Committee for Chemistry, to find out more. In this video, Bengt discusses whether the prize should be awarded to groups of people or organisations. Once upon a time, you know, you would have had perhaps an individual making a significant advance in a, in a field. But these days, you know, it takes many individuals to, to push back the boundaries of science. And the Nobels reflect that. Now we have three persons, you know, two, three people being awarded the, the prize. But the limit is, is three. Yes. Yep. So do you, do you see that that might change in the future? Will that become too restrictive? It's a very good question, and it's one that <clears throat> we in the academy have asked ourselves whether we should, uh, uh, because the fact is that the research group is often very integrated and it's difficult to put the point on one person or two or three persons. Um, however, uh, the current uh, uh, consensus uh, is that we should not go beyond three. Um, uh, one person is ideal because then uh, you lift forward, you, you make somebody an icon for representing something. But once you come to a bigger group, the, it uh, will lose its uh, impact and that would be sad. As, um, uh, one of the prizes have uh, exploited that uh, and that is the um, Peace Prize. Uh, that it has gone to organizations sometimes. Um, I know that the physicists have been tempted uh, work at CERN to, to give it to a whole institution, yeah. but uh, they have not um, done that yet. And would, would, that, would the physicists be allowed to do it separately no. from the chemists? No. It, it would be, have to no. be an organisation, the whole Nobel? We, uh, the academy will not allow that. Yeah.